Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, to go and bear fruit, fruit that will remain. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, everyone. From that second reading of St. Paul, we had some very challenging words for us, especially in the time in which we live. And the letter opened up today for us in this way. St. Paul said, brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Have no anxiety at all. Not just a little or try to curb it as best you can. No anxiety at all. I wonder if St. Paul knows what's going on in the world today. Obviously he does through the Holy Spirit, he's in heaven. Uh, he wrote this 2,000 years ago and they had their own troubles then as well. As you know, Christians were being rounded up and put to death for their beliefs. Uh, St. Paul's life was not an easy one. Many times himself, almost stoned to death, put on trial, numerous places, shipwrecked and all the rest and beaten. Uh, so, and yet, he tells us have no anxiety at all. Well, what's going on in the world around us? We had all of those devastating uh, Hurricanes, Irma, Harvey, and a couple of others, earthquakes, uh, and those things are natural events that happen just for earthly reasons, if you will. Right? Scientists try to delve into what causes wind patterns, earthquakes, all the rest. Uh, no one is really responsible for those things. Me and you, we don't make those things happen. That's beyond our will. 
is just the act of God, as they say. What becomes worse is when something does happen by the hand of man, when will is involved. So for instance, the Las Vegas shooting, a terrible and horrible crime. Uh, the most Americans ever killed in one day by a single uh, gunman. And uh, it kind of makes you think, am I okay if I go to a concert? Am I okay if I go to a ball game? Am I okay if I go to the city park for a walk? Am I okay if I get on an airplane? Right, the world has changed drastically probably since 9-11. And St. Paul says, have no anxiety at all. That is a challenge. Because if we look at something like the Las Vegas shooting, that goes way beyond a hurricane. Even though a hurricane can cause more property destruction and even take lives. Because someone is responsible for the act. People will ask me, how can God allow such things to happen? Isn't God good? Why didn't God do something to prevent that person from taking those lives? And I guess since he's God, he could do whatever he wants, right? He could have stopped that. But then why didn't he? Doesn't he love all of those innocent people that were there attending that concert? None of them deserve that. Now, God could have taken away or never have given us free will. We could have just been more like robots, where we would have just liked each other and gotten along and no one would have any, never done anything bad or anything good. Is there any value in love if you don't have the ability to choose? If you choose well, what is the value of a reward? The opposite is true. If a person decides to commit an evil act, then that devalues and there's punishment involved. However, if you have no free will, you cannot be rewarded or punished because you never made the choice. God makes every choice for you and we just kind of walk around stagnant like robots. But God did give us this beautiful gift of being able to choose so that when I do, there is value in the act. There is also a value to love. Think of when two people fall in love with one another. If they had no free will, then love doesn't exist nor would love even exist for your children. But this is a free act that you give of yourself, both to your spouses, to your parents, to your siblings. And those acts have unbelievable value. Yes, free will can be used for incredible good, like Mother Teresa. Every act she chose, small or big, she tried to do the right thing. It had tremendous value. That's why we hold her up on a pedestal. But if God made all of those choices for her, we wouldn't put her up there. Again, it would bring down the value of the act. And that's what drove that man, his own choices, to go up into that hotel room and take innocent lives. What his punishment is going to be, that's up to God. I know in my heart where I want him to go, but I'm not going to say it out loud. Because we're always supposed to have hope, even for the worst of us, which sounds crazy, right? When Jesus went up on the cross, he didn't say I only died for 10 of them. For God so loved the world, not just Father John and a few others, or my family and a few others, whatever it is. It's still hard though to wrap your mind around such things because those are brutal acts. However, they happen far and few between even though we think they're increasing. 
There's over seven billion people in the world. If we did a percentage of how many people committed that kind of act, it would still be rather small in terms of numbers. So how does this relate to us? Because we're not that person, obviously not. It still relates to us in terms of what we do in our acts. We have opportunity to make our acts of value or have value. Think of the moments that you might be able to spend with someone, even that extra two minutes to listen to someone who may need you. You could decide, oh, I'm too busy. And you're really not, you just don't want to be bothered. All of us have had that temptation. But when we choose to do the good, we put value in that act in front of God's eyes and in the building up of relationship and community. Think of when you can be patient with your children, even when they may be driving you crazy. And yet you still remain quiet and you hear them out and you listen attentively with a parent's love and understanding. Yes, you went out of your way. You chose to do something good for someone else. Children remember that. And then they take that with them, hopefully, and do the same for others. How about when we're driving in the car and someone cuts us off? Do we pray for them nice and quietly? Or are we performing some other action? <laughs> right? All little things, they're small. Sometimes we might even think they're insignificant, but they have tremendous value because all of those small little things help us to become holy so that we have to do bigger things that we can do them because we have disciplined ourselves in the act of love. I've said this before, love is not what they portray in a Hollywood film. Right, everybody's happy at the end. Off into the sunset they go. No, love is work. Love is discipline. Love is sacrifice. Look at the cross. So what are we gonna choose to do? Are we gonna do those little acts the best we can? I pray that we do. Because I think when we do those little acts, no matter what's going on in our lives, how bad we might be having it, that we can truly have no anxiety at all. St. Paul does not want us to worry. And he's not echoing new words. Think of David when he says in Psalm 23, even though I walk in the valley of evil, I shall not fear because you are with me with your rod and staff that give me courage. And he was being besieged on all sides, even from his own son, Absalom, who wanted his father dead. And King David could still say those words and mean them. That is a big act of the will, huh? Not just spending two minutes with someone, but surrendering himself to Almighty God. That's what makes for a great leader. Next week, uh, our movie night's gonna be A Man for All Seasons, St. Thomas More. If you wanna come over and see that, maybe you've seen it already, but come on over and see it. It's a great example of a man who gave himself completely to both the little acts of life and the big ones and did them well, did them out of love. So my prayer for myself and all of you is that we will truly embrace St. Paul's words, that no matter what's going on around us, hurricanes or terrorists, or even things that happen in our own personal lives, whether it's sickness or betrayal, that we will have no anxiety at all, because in our acts, and in our faith, we are children of the Lord. God bless you.